Welcome to our lesson on the carbon cycle. Please use the worksheet provided to fill in the notes as you go. You will notice that as you're listening to the lecture notes, I did skip some sections. It is important to listen to the lesson and I hit a step in there that you will only know if you listen. So please make sure you're listening to the lecture as you go. Our essential questions for this unit have been what are the biological and geological carbon cycles? And how do the atmosphere, biosphere, lithosphere, and ocean interact in the carbon cycle? As we've progressed through this uh, unit, it is important that you know a couple important key terms. So a cycle is when things happen repeatedly. Um, so they come around over and over again. Um, in essentially a circle like you created in the Explore It station. We have also been discussing carbon, which is the fourth most abundant element in the universe and essential to life on Earth. Forms of carbon that we've discussed include carbon dioxide, limestone, which is what we were talking about when I said it was in the dirt, wood, diamonds, graphite, and of course there's liquid carbon, which we find in the form of fossil fuels. So in general, the carbon cycle is a system that transfers carbon from one part of the environment to another. The sun and the heat of the Earth's interior provide the energy that drives this circle. So the geological carbon cycle is the one that interacts with the rock cycle, whereas the biological carbon cycle interacts with the living organism. The geological carbon cycle is a very long-term carbon cycle. It takes millions of years for that to move through these processes, okay? Um, some of the processes in the geological cycle are weathering and dissolution, precipitation of minerals, burial and subduction, volcanic eruptions, and combustion. Weathering and dissolution. Most of you have probably heard of weathering, but not dissolution. So carbonic acid forms when atmospheric carbon dioxide and water react. This is what causes acid rain to fall. Okay, and when acid rain falls, it reacts with the minerals of the Earth's surface, dissolving them. So dissolution is this process of the acid rain dissolving the Earth's surface. Burial and subduction. So carbon bearing sediment is continually being deposited on the seafloor, sea floor, forming new rock or oceanic crust, for example, limestone. Seafloor spreading pushes the seafloor under continental margins in a process that we call subduction, as you can see in the picture here. As you saw in the Organize It activity of our exploration stations, um, volcanic eruptions also contribute to this. So seafloor carbon is pushed deeper into the earth and heats up and eventually melts and can rise back to the surface. Volcanoes, hot springs, tectonic uplift, like earthquakes for example, all release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere and the cycle begins again. Combustion was another um, term that you came across in the organized activity. And this is when rapid chemical combination of a substance with oxygen involving the production of heat, light, and release of carbon dioxide. Essentially, this is burning coals, fossil fuels. Uh, this can also happen in forest fires and other types of burning example. So quickly, I'd like you to think this over by yourself, okay? What are the four processes through which the geologic carbon cycle interacts? And can you list them from memory? If so, go ahead and try to do so on your paper. If you need a little peek, you can look at the picture. So now we look at the biological carbon cycle. So this is the short-term carbon cycle that only takes hours or days, maybe a few years to get through. And uh, this interacts through the processes of photosynthesis, cellular respiration, decomposition, and diffusion. 
as we remember from the last unit, photosynthesis is when green plants use solar energy to turn atmospheric carbon dioxide into carbohydrates and sugars. This is how we are able to get our energy from the sun, okay? This is the link between the sun's energy and our own energy. Cellular respiration, on the other hand, is the reverse of photosynthesis. So the sugars that we consume or animals consume are used for metabolism and change the fuel back into carbon dioxide, which is what we all exhale. So how can carbon get back into the atmosphere through respiration, right? The plants break down the sugar in order to grow or animals eat the plants and break down sugar for energy. Those are the two ways that carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere. Decomposition, this is something we will talk more about in our ecology unit as well, but this is when carbon enters soil as dead plant matter. It is broken down by the microorganisms during decay and the process releases carbon back to the atmosphere through respiration. Remember, we saw this on our introduction video with the rabbit decaying back into the dirt. So decomposition really leads to organic matter or what we would consider soil, okay? It originates from a living organism and the compounds contain hydrocarbons. It gets buried over a lo over long period of time and can form deposits of carbon containing fossil fuels such as coal and oil. So it really releases carbon back to the atmosphere, atmosphere through human consumption Diffusion is when carbon is absorbed and released by the ocean's surface, um, specifically where it meets the air. Okay, so carbon dioxide bubbles diffuse from the liquid up into the atmosphere. There's an excess amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It gets dissolved into the waters of the ocean. So to wrap this up, the geologic versus biologic carbon cycle the amount of carbon taken up by photosynthesis and released back to the atmosphere by respiration each year is about 1,000 times greater than the amount of carbon that moves through the geological cycle. So we can see that is a much more rapid turnover of carbon. So the point of this presentation was to help you be able to interpret how the carbon cycle flows through the atmosphere, lithosphere, biosphere, and the oceans. At the bottom of your notes, I would like you to define lithosphere and biosphere, and then draw a box around them in a different color pen, marker, colored pencil, highlighter, it doesn't matter. 